is it possible for a fairy to fall in love with you? Well, Dag the Evogus Falcher. Hi, hello, and welcome. John O'Sullivan from the Irish Pagan School. And yes, we have a lot of different types of folklore and information. So, neat answer, not hard to say. Yes, it is actually possible for stories of people from the other crowd. Generally, they're known as Lanonshi, as in women of the, the other crowd. But sometimes these fairy lovers are male as well, depending on the relationships. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of folklore and a lot of story that talks about it. And they talk about it in different lights. And invariably, all of these relationships between members of the other crowd and people of our descent or humans are fraught with peril and usually end in tragedy. So, um. The most common narrative that you will find when you look up Lan and She comes from three sources. So we have Lady Wild, um, who is not a bad resource. We have Lady Augusta Gregory, who is not a great resource. And then we have William Butler Yeats, who is really not a great resource. Um, but the those kind of talk about the particular type of Lan and She being this almost predatory lover, this succubus-esque vampiric entity who will fall in love with a human and then drain them of their life and take from them their essence but at the same time they would inspire them to beautiful great works of art or poetry or music uh, but invariably they die young and so that is what's most commonly known of when we think about Lan and Shi but it's not the whole narrative. And that's where things do get a bit sticky when we look at the information and kind of track it back. So the more modern resources have this almost muse-esque, succubus-esque vampiric entity who is only after the human in order to absorb their life force. Um, it, was said, it was said that if the person who was the recipient of the attention of the Lan and she could resist their urges, could resist their advances, then they would be safe, but the Lan and she would become bound to them and that the Lan and she would then haunt them and pursue them continually. Um, but if the person were to give in to the urges of the Lan and she and themselves, then they are doomed to be consumed over time, regardless of what ecstatic creations of art they might do. So that's one version of the Lan and Chi, which is very much promoted by W.B. Yeats and his romanticization of ancient Irish folklore. But there are older stories, there's older poetry before Yeats, which talk about relationships between people from fairy and people from our world. Now, OK, fairy is not a great word. So we generally use the Dini Shi, the people of the Shi, being the Shi being the Hollow Hills or the other world. So quite commonly, we have a number of different stories that talk about women of the she, usually as she, as in A-O-S-S-I-T-H-E is how we would spell that. And these are people usually of the upper hierarchy, the upper kind of echelons of status within the other world. Many members of the two of the Danon, for example, are considered as she. And it is here that we find an example of fairy lovers and their interactions with humans that are not these vampiric kind of draining muse-esque stories, but more connected relationships of women of the other crowd, women of the other world, being associated, linked and connected with families and bloodlines in our world. Most notably and famously, of course, there is Kleena, Anya and Avil. All of these are known as Ban Shi or women of the Shi, but also as Lanan Shi in that they do and have had in the stories romantic relationships, some of which led to, to having bloodlines and children. So there are some families in Ireland, old Irish families that claim lineage directly back to these members of the two of the Danon. But there's also relationships or the, the association between these goddesses, these Aeshi, these Lananshi, and various families based on individuals that they fell in love with and then just became connected to that bloodline ongoing. Now, when we look at the different types of relationships, the relationships invariably involve some form of connected agreement or some association, which usually links to secrecy. So if someone does have a relationship with a member of the other crowd, they're generally not going to talk about it because most commonly in the folklore, as soon as this person violates the trust of secrecy of that relationship, 
the a relationship is abandoned by the member of the other crowd, by the Lanan Shi, which leads the person who has been abandoned by the Lanan Shi to pine away until they die of abandonment and loss and grief. So there's a number of different stories about that. Um, there's also stories of Ban Fasa, as in wise women in older Irish cultures, who would have associations or links with certain Lan and she in their lives. So whenever they were out gathering herbs or generating their knowledge or engaging in their, their work, protecting and supporting their communities, it was believed or said that the Lan and she would walk with them. Now, if we want to chase this further back and look at other examples and other stories into the mythological period there are some which conform very squarely to the narrative of the Lan and Shi. As we go back to the Ulster cycle we've got the very famous story where Macha comes from the other world as a woman of the Shi and falls in love with a farmer in Ulster and it is there at that time that she has a relationship with him, she lives in his house, she bears, like she conceives children for him and helps generate a whole lot of wealth. Her only agreement, her only stipulation is don't fucking tell anybody about this. Um, unfortunately, the tragedy strikes. He, The husband goes off, wealthy farmer now because of his abundance, because of his relationship with Marka. And in his cups in the hall of the King of Ulster, he says how brilliant and fantastic his wife is and how magical she is that she could outrace the king's horses, which, of course, leads to Marka's tragedy. But every step and narrative of that includes that connection of relationship between a woman of the other crowd and someone of our world, a prohibition and secrecy involving that relationship and then an abandonment. Now in this it's not an abandonment that she gets to leave unfortunately, she is forced to race the horses and she dies, giving birth to her children and then cursing all of the men of Ulster for nine generations for being assholes. Um, great story, I would recommend looking that one up. But that's not the old or only story we have of relationships between a woman of the other she, of the she or other crowd and a person of our world. In the Fenian cycle later on, we have the story of, actually before we jump to the Fenian cycle, also in the Ulster cycle there's Octra Nera. And this is the other side of Lan and she relationships, because sometimes in the case with Maka, the, the, women, the woman of the other world comes in and has the relationship and lives in our world with the person that they fall in love with and share their life with. In other stories, though, the woman of the she is in the other world or brings the partner into the other world. And that's what we see in Octra Nera, where the Connacht hero Nera goes out on Samhain and engages in a, a test set to him by Alil, as in Maven Alil. And he ends up going into the other crowd. He falls in love and has a relationship and has children with a woman in the she. So he lives for a good time over there until she tells him how to escape the other world and to return back to our world. At which point he's like, but so much time has passed. Everyone is like killed and slaughtered. She's like, actually, time moves differently here. If you leave now, you'll be able to reach the same fire that you left. And so even though he has spent a year or more living with this woman in fairy, having a relationship with her, he could still leave and make it back in time as if he had only been gone for an hour or two. And the, the other famous story, very famous story, comes from the later Fenian cycle, which is, of course, Neve and Oshin and his trip to Tirnanog. And so the story is that Neve, a woman of the Shi, a Lan and Shi, sees Oshin one day and falls completely head over heels with him. She's out riding on her horse and she sees him and she, she falls in love with him. And she brings him up onto the horse and kind of kidnaps him out of our world. So they go back and they live together in Tirnanog, the land of the ever useful. They have a relationship. They are in love together. She bears children. But he has this sadness and longing for his father, the Fenian warriors, Ireland of old. And that's where he takes on the horse trip to come back and not realizing that he hasn't just been gone for a short period of time. He's been gone for hundreds of years. His only warning from his Neve, the Lanangi, his fairy lover, is don't get off the fucking horse. But again, all of these stories seem to have some form of tragic ending, seem to have some form of warning to it, which is very common for the Irish folklore. And so, yes, Oshin, unfortunately, either through misadventure or, you know, trying to help someone out either with a wagon or with a boulder, he snaps, either he falls from the horse or the the saddle snaps and he falls from the horse. But the moment that that happens, all of the centuries that he had missed was being in Tirnanog come upon him in a rush 
Um, and in one version of the tale, he dies then and there, turning to dust. In another version, he lives long enough to recount all of the stories of the Fenian cycle so that they would be remembered and recorded. And that is why the Fenian cycle of our mythology is also known as the Oceanic cycle, because it's believed to have been related by Ushin. Ushin, son of Fionn Mahul, who had a lan and she, a fairy lover. So... To take it back, is it possible for a member of the other crowd to fall in love with someone in our world? Yes, the answer, not hard to say. It's very much possible, and we have multiple examples of how that has happened through our time frame, which I have listed. But again, is someone who has a lover from the other world likely to talk about it? Probably not. If you have found this interesting, please do the like and subscribe thing. As I said, I'm here trying to go through all of these weird mythological monsters and creatures and entities of the other world and how they inspire me uh, when it comes to Irish mythology, folklore and education. So if you'd like to know more, pick up some free resources from the Irish Pagan School. Go to irishpagan.school forward slash free. And until next time, look after yourself. Take care. Goodbye.